In this video, we will talk about how to evaluate a limit algebraically using direct substitution. All right, so I want to begin with the key fact, which says that if our function f can be written, can be written with a single formula, I'm going to underline single, a single formula, so by single, I mean that it's not something like a piecewise function. So if we can write f with a single formula in terms of known functions. So by known functions, I mean functions that we've commonly seen before. Things like uh, polynomial functions or exponential functions, log functions, trig functions. And the number a that x is approaching is in the domain of f of our function then. We can just plug in x equals a directly. So this key fact can largely be shown uh, using the limit laws. So the limit laws we stated mostly so that I could state this fact about when I can just plug in a number to evaluate a limit. And to prove the limit laws, the limit laws themselves can be proven, we need some higher level machinery, which we'll talk about in the next section. Those are called epsilon delta proofs. All right, let's look at an example. So I have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x to the third minus 8 over x minus 2. So in general, when we evaluate a limit algebraically, we always want to begin by plugging in to see what happens. Always begin by plugging in. And if we do that and the result, if we do that and the result is defined, So eg by that, I mean not something. If I plug in and it's not something like getting some stuff over zero, because if you had zero on the bottom of a fraction, that would be undefined. So if you can plug in and you get some number that's defined, then this is the answer. That will be our limit. So for this limit right here, and put implication arrow. If I plug in, I will get negative 2 cubed minus 8 on the top. On the bottom, we will get negative 2 minus 2. And if I simplify, the numerator now becomes negative 16. The denominator is negative 4. And then dividing those, we get 4. So that is definitely defined. It's not undefined, like stuff over 0, which means that is our answer. So in the next video, we will look at case two, which is when we plug in, what, what do we do if we get something of the form non-zero number on top and zero on the bottom? In terms of our goals for this section, we finished two part A, talking about when we can directly substitute in to evaluate a limit. 